important. Back in 2000, 2007, eight or so, uh, <clears throat> it was very obvious the French had still had like quite a bit of uh, uh, momentum and some presence in the, uh, at least in the mobile market. So <clears throat> when you were looking at the, uh, just about any field in IT, uh, including the potential of the uh, Zoom at the time. So you, you have to remember back in 2007, it was still a new product which you thought, you know, maybe it will gain, I don't know, 10 market, 10 percent market share. Uh, maybe it will become a phone. And loads of people were talking about something like a Zoom phone at the time. Uh, and you weren't quite so sure if maybe there was a future to it. But I think loads of these products have failed. Uh, you did at least, you know, in two years, I think they lost about 20 products basically shut down and divisions closed down and all kinds of stuff. I barely hear much about like Xbox 360 anymore. And I, I really stopped reading Microsoft News about a year ago. I think almost almost exactly a year ago in, in October. Because there wasn't much to read. Uh, there was, uh, I remember in October last year, I thought, why do I even spend uh, quite a few hours going through the headlines? Because I'm just finding, I found some things, but it was just loads of like small junk, you know. So I'll tell you that what I found back in October 2010 was loads of reports at a time, maybe it was at the end of September 2010, doing a comparison of how often Microsoft was mentioned in the news. And they were showing even Facebook was getting mentioned more than Microsoft was. Of course, Facebook is partly owned by Microsoft, but, but they were, Microsoft didn't have much to tell in terms of news. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean they're a small company, it means that they don't have anything that's changing. So, Oracle and IBM don't make so much news either, but they're very, very you know, profitable companies because they've got all these clients, mostly enterprise clients, they don't have to do anything very exciting, just sell them the database or the occasional server. So Microsoft becomes this company which maybe sells quite a few exchange servers and maybe quite a few people still buy, have to buy office licenses and, uh, you know, and Windows is mostly uh, involving the payments from OEMs like Dell and HP. Uh, actually, HP is quitting the business pretty much for Windows, but uh, they they pay quite a few, perhaps over the years, billions of dollars to Microsoft to basically have the right to install Windows on their PCs. Uh, so this is where the, Microsoft, the, the money comes to Microsoft from. But they don't manage to move forward so much. So even if people buy more and more PCs, and if there is inflation and more people buy PCs, they might actually increase the revenue from these things. If they don't manage to move into a, become a search company, if they don't manage to grow the business in Hotmail, I think Hotmail is eroding in general. They still try to like say, oh, we're applying a new layer of lipstick to the, you know, the thing. <laughs> people don't care, and people just people just leave it in rows. I think they have a major problem with spam as well. I don't know why, but they don't manage to flag spam correctly, or maybe they'll over flag things. I, I know I send messages sometimes to people who are on Hotmail, and they just say, well, I mean, didn't receive that. Mm -hmm. So I say, oh, it's Hotmail, it's probably just destroyed. So, I mean, I mean, here you have a company that's not been making any major thing in ages. I don't think Xbox, Xbox 360 was it, and you know, that goes back five years ago anyway. Um, I don't think, they, I, they did actually try. So you have to remember, it's nice that they were trying to stay where they are. They created a search engine and then changed its name and changed its name again. And they made a phone and they bought a phone company, or at the time not a trade phone company, but a phone maker called Danger. So they had, you remember the sidekick? You never hear about it, do you? No, no. I don't think T-Mobile is even stocking. I, th I think they completely dumped the thing, but I, I don't follow Microsoft News. I don't really know the status of this thing. Silverlight is dead. So Silverlight was supposed to be the, you know, the future of the web, you know, mm -hmm. Microsoft videos. And there used to be this thing called uh, Soapbox, which was supposed to be the YouTube of Microsoft. That, mm -hmm. that shut down. I like bloody, I, I've never seen a single video. So oh. I've never seen anybody actually uploading anything to it. I mean, for me, a turning point in Microsoft's strategy or Microsoft's admission of defeat was the Live Spaces fiasco, where all their refugee bloggers that were on Live Spaces when they were told the service was being disbanded uh, had to go over to the Linux offering of uh, WordPress. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, Microsoft were very, very lucky that they managed to sign a deal or form yeah, some sort I mean, of arrangement. The WordPress actually wanted to accept something that was like 99% 99, 99 spam. Um, I mean, we know. <laughs> but Microsoft said it had... Uh, it had, was it 30 million blogs? And the estimation was that about 99% of them were just spam. 
Well, I mean, the thing was, Microsoft were very lucky that WordPress was so accommodating in allowing an easy uh, tra- uh, transfer over from Live Spaces to WordPress. I believe that uh, there was some sort of... Um, yeah, well, it works well for automatic because they get more users and more advertising. Ha- having said that, though, if WordPress had just stuck to its guns and not offered that facility, then I think the, there would be a natural migration anyway to WordPress because where else could they go, really? Um, WordPress is seen as one of the definitive uh, blogging services on this, I think. So. I recently read the, uh, I'm not sure how accurate the statistics are, but it said about, I'm not sure if it was 13% or 20% of the new sites or the new domains or maybe it's active sites or I don't remember the definition would run WordPress as a CMS uh, either for a, you know a blog or for a commercial site. I personally have created quite a few sites with it recently for clients as well. It's 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 really easy. It's really become quite a. Uh, the only main competitor now is Drupal. So Drupal is uh, more of a CMS. They're, they're not exactly the same. Like one of them actually marked itself as a blogging platform. The other one is more if you want to like build a commercial site. But you you know you can achieve both things with both pieces of software. Mm-hmm. And I think both have a very similar business model as well. They uh, they allow you to do the hosting with them for a. No, not for you could do it for P as well. They can do the um, they can do the hosting for your site, or they could host your blog in their domain. And then that's just a way of trying to give different levels of support for people. And I actually remember because I've been with the WordPress community since 2004 and quite actively involved in it, and everything, and code and patching and stuff. Uh, and it was around 2005 or six uh, when. Matt Mullenweg was working on trying to build an umbrella around the company and then making WordPress.com, which would be a multi-user, uh, based on WordPress MU, uh, it would be a multi-user platform, one among many, uh, which would start to absorb people and basically put a central place for, uh, for users who don't know how to do hosting or install things in the servers and so on and so forth. Uh, and now Drupal's doing the same thing. I think it's called Drupal Gardens or something. That's that's where they allow people to centrally put their sites based in Drupal. Well, we have one other topic before we go to another music uh, break, and that's going to be Amazon Tablet. And uh, Roy, I hope you've got the facts and figures for this one, because whilst I've been reading it, I haven't got the finer points, so I'm going to be relying on you yet again. I think the main... Uh, <clears throat> sort of talking point. Uh, in most, if you look at most articles, the thing they speak about the price, it's $199, which isn't really new. So, so quite a few tablets would strive to have the one as the first digit, so it would be 199 or 189 or something like that. But this one is supposed to be a book reader and also a bit more. And so I, I think Amazon was had a very nice uh, uh, compact and uh, light and uh, very energy efficient thing for reading books before, but it was increasingly perhaps facing competitions from people who offered for about the same price a tablet that would be more than just a book reader and also have color and all kinds of stuff. So they had to uh, they had to evolve a bit, and they created this tablet which they would use then to uh, uh, to give you books with DRM. So, uh, but in this case they actually inter- they actually say it's fine for you to uh, jailbreak. Thing. So if you just want to buy it as a tablet and install something else on it, I think most people would not, would not know how to do that. But if they want to do that, that's, that's fine with, with Amazon. One of the things that should be mentioned, though, is Amazon does pay Microsoft for uh, Linux and Kindle. So uh, I suppose that in Kindle Fire, or in this tablet, it's going to be also a slight concern. I don't know how much they pay. Uh, and it's, it's coming to the point now, and it's... I think almost half the major companies that sell um, is something that's based on like Android and and, uh, and uh, Linux. Well, I suppose that there isn't much Linux out there that's not Android if if it sells by the millions now. Almost any company that grows big, and even in the case of I think Amazon used to base the Kindle on something like Linux 2.26 or sorry 2, 2.6.26 uh, or something like that very old version of Linux, which is very expensive and very complicated to maintain, especially for security purposes too. So they wanted to move into something that's the 
equivalent in some sense to Wind River and uh, Monte Vista and all these embedded platforms that do all these things for you and try to standardize a make a system that's embedded that's easier to manage. Mm-hmm. So, so in this case, they moved to Android. And more and more companies that used 